Welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian Kremlin, and with me is Jake Truthless of Canada. Welcome back, Jake. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be back. Today, I'm truthless of maybe not writing the epigraphs. <laughs> um, the, the the confidence has gone on down, down on that. I should have, as a matter of principle, been like, you know, you're probably not going to figure it out in the first. But some of the epigraphs, I do just like my first instinct is just right. Like, it's only usually for part one. So, whatever. I mean, part of the, these episodes are them aging like milk, because basically everything we say is disproven. Yeah. Well, Each you know what? <laughs> People were fully convinced Adolin was going to be Odium as champion in the pre-release of Oathbringer and the pre-release of Rhythm of War. So and we're back there now. Myself. We're back there now again. Because, because Wait, are people like... been saying Adolin is Odium's champion again? Yeah, me and Jimmy last oh, week. Oh, you're on this team? Bro, <laughs> this happens every book. <laughs> me and Jimmy last week. Jimmy's like, I don't know, man, but Adolin's looking. <laughs> no, bro, this has literally happened every single pre-release book. Like, because, it happened at Oathbringer, and people were so sure. It was like, because him killing Sadius is foreshadowing for it. And I'm like, okay. Well, maybe it is. Who's to say? And then I remember something for like, and it's like, no, Sadius sucked. Hey, man. Look, that wasn't him going down a dark path. He's like the least hateful person. <laughs> but we're like, what is, what's he doing? What is this, this boy doing besides, you know, being with Shalan? He needs a place to go. And I'm sorry. Just, okay. Well, for everyone who's confused and is listening to this by accident, spoilers for Wind and Truth, obviously. Sorry that, um, you ended up for being... anyone in the past we're doing this for episode this for, i mean this chapter says it's five and six they, yeah you can figure chapter it out if you're on autoplay yeah. and haven't been able to look on this on youtube this is chapter five and six if you're yeah. from the future you've probably read winds and truth and are just like look at these morons but yeah. you know what <laughs> or maybe if you just hate watching and you look at these morons each time thank you um or maybe we get everything right and you're like oh my god they are this was the they've moment. predicted it all they're geniuses <laughs> You guys, I want you to know how committed Jake was to this um, to this episode. Um, Self-proclaimed, didn't realize this was happening until I messaged him ten minutes. Yeah, I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 like, at work today, I was like, I feel like I have like, is there a YouTube like thing today? I feel like I have something. And then I was like, No, I don't. I, I can't remember any. Lost in Roshar is a canoe in the ocean with all these holes popping up and I'm desperately duct taping it together. And occasionally Jake and Jimmy stop by and laugh at me. That's uh that's the vibe. No, but <laughs> yeah, then then I got the sla- the the Discord message and I was like, oh yeah. Lost in Roshar. Hey, I appreciate that you could have got that message and in 10 minutes you're down, you're ready. Let's talk wind and tree. I was actually, I was already recording something, so it was really easy. It would have been kind of funny if I, like, it, it, it could have, it, the timing wise could have been worse. Like, yeah. you know, I could be, I've been like reading, could have been like eating. I could have been like, I, I could have been in the shower and just been, been like, Christian. where are you? I'm reading another time. Yeah. Well, if I was reading, sometimes when I'm reading, I'm just like, don't get distracted by my phone and I just put mm. it far away and I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm going to read like 60 pages. And then like an hour yeah. later, I'm like, I would have come and been like, Discord. I'll yeah. send you the link soon. I would have been like, <laughs> Oh, man. Well, hey, look, quickly, quick Sanderson update, which we were totally well researched, not about three seconds before hitting record. But Sanderson is writing, pre writing White Sand, looking into the, the prose version of that, which I'm looking forward to. I could not really get a hold of the omnibus of comics. And then once I heard he was doing a, a novelization of it, I just thought, well, I'll just wait. Have you, have you read white sand? No, I've read like the tiny section in the Arcanum unbounded. Mm. I thought it was kind of bad. And then my policy is that I'll read white sand for a long time. It's been I'll read white sand when like someone tells me it's good. Hmm. And like I had no not there saying. yet. <laughs> um, even Sanderson hadn't told me it was good. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like that for a couple. Uh, like there's a there's a black company novel, Port of Shadows, and I'm like I'll read it when someone tells me it's good. Mm. And someone on Jimmy's Discord joined, who's like he and he's like, oh yeah, Port of Shadows is great. And I was like, interesting, never been told that before. And then he heard like, wait, people don't like Port of Shadows, and then he reread it, and he's like, this is trash. What was I thinking? <laughs> so. Um, I'll read the new White Sand if if someone tells me it's good. I, I just like just like one person. 
Like we don't need a yeah, lot just of people. One. To tell me. Hmm. But uh, I'm not going to read it if no one tells me it's good. I'm sure. I'm sure it will be good. I'm it, the fact that I'm he's redoing sure. it. You're less sure. Ooh, controversial takes. I just I've I've pretty heard good about so much sand. crapping on white sand that really? I, it's just associated in my head with that. Now. <laughs> I think it's just like an awkward, like it was a comic in a novel universe. It is always going to stick out a little. I mean, that's me just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, but maybe, maybe it doesn't deserve that. I don't know. Dude, is my w- mic working? I'm so paranoid since when we recorded once and it wasn't working. I don't know. I mean, you sound, you sound, you sound normal. (laughs) This is louder. Like that was louder. It was louder when you went closer to it. All right. We're in. This is, is this louder? (laughs) Just everyone either had a car crash or threw their headphones away. (laughs) I I apologize (laughs) to everyone for everything that I've done generally over the years. Okay, great. All right, dude. Epigraphs. The best part of these chapters, because I love, Theorying and epigraphs are where the best theories lay. And look, we're in doubt now. Who the heck is writing Wind and Truth? So I thought it would be interesting, right? To I just compiled all the epigraphs into one wall of text. And this feels like a total, oh, I don't know, like at least from what we understand, it feels like a tone shift. But I think maybe our line of inquiry was just wrong, thinking it's Kaladin or Seth. I don't know. Yeah, at this point, I, I think I messaged you, or maybe I didn't message you and I just you thought did, about yeah. doing it, but yeah. I was like, what if he hasn't read the chapters yet? I think I was going to message you much earlier this, but I was like, let's give him more time to read the chapters. Right. <laughs> um, and then I was like, this this feels like it's different people. Like this, yes. like this just doesn't feel like the same person as, you're about to read chapter two, but I'm looking at chapter two and I'm just like, I first knew the wind as a child. During days before I knew dreams. What need has a child of dreams or aspirations? They live and love the life that is. And as a historian, I find such <laughs> nuances relevant. As a philosopher, I find them enticing. Like, yeah, that just, excuse like, me. <laughs> I guess it could be just very different parts of written by one thing. But I'm like, you know, the, so the book was originally <clears throat> the Knights of Wind and Truth. Knights, plural. Is that two nights, one of wind, one in truth? Or is it like a lot of nights of wind and truth? So maybe yeah. the reason this seems like different people is because it's different people. It is. It's it's just a, it's a whole author's group filling in the nights of wind and truth. Yeah, like Jimmy was like, his line of thinking last week was saying there's going to be like a new order. Like he said it so naturally. Like, yeah, there will be a new order, not of wind runners, but it'll be of like wind and truth. But I never really thought of it that way. Um, yeah, the ten orders. There's so much ten comes up so much in Stormlight because yeah. it's like uh, the shard honors number. The same way sixteen comes up an insane amount in Mistborn. So an eleventh mm. order, I think, is unlikely. Unless there's ten more combo honors. Era two combo orders. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we wind and have truth. Established that having two spren causes funky things to happen. Ooh, what if yeah. you have two spren and they're different spren? Wind and truth. What if that's a what if that's a composite windrunner skybreaker and yeah. it is sigil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, does that actually work? <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I said it, it could be him. That's why. Oh, that's exactly okay. why. I said so it's that. like it's a, it's like Knights of Wind and Truth. It's like a composite order. Okay. Yeah. And maybe that's because, like, I think that was kind of teased, wasn't it? Yeah. It's kind of like, at first I was like, this doesn't really sound like sigil to me. But now I'm just like, if it's one, like, if it's one person, (laughs) the thing is, sigil is weird because he sort of fits with all of them, but he doesn't fit with any of them. Like, even Mm. him calling himself a philosopher, I'm like, would he, though? Mm. But, like, he kind of is one. But, like, would he call himself a philosopher? I feel like he is, like, would be like, no, I'm not a philosopher. I'm a storyteller. I'm a world singer. That's totally different. And he's like, he's Wit's apprentice. Wit's not going to be like, no, I'm not a philosopher. I don't have theme in my stories. Like, but the thing is, is, right, he, ah. you know what Sanderson said? He said, when he, oh, I forget when it was, but he said, like, in the reading order that Sunlit Man should be read between Rhythm of War and wind and truth he actually said that hmm. which makes me start to think maybe he does want to plant that seed that sigil 
has to do with this whole wind and truth yeah, business. It's so weird if it's sigil because it's 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 like it's like Bizarro sigil where it's just no Bizarro is opposite. It's just like it's every single Slightly one <laughs> is just like a quarter turn away from me being like. <laughs> That's it. You're you know? right. It's, it's slightly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, none of them are like this can't be sigil, but all of them are like all of them are mm. like that's kind of weird if it's sigil though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. All right, I'm gonna read it all, and we're just gonna let's all read as a fandom. Let's hear it all back now. What we've got so far, and see what we think. So, I should have known I was being watched. All my life, the signs were there. I first knew the wind as a child during days before I knew dreams. What need has a child of dreams or aspirations? They live and love the life that is. The wind told me before she vanished that it was the change in Odium's vessel that restored her voice. I wonder, perhaps it is the new storm making people begin to reconsider that the wind is not their enemy. I have read that in the ancient days, the wind often spoke to both human and singer. It would then mean that the wind stopped talking, not because of odium, but because of people who began to fear her or to worship the storm instead. As a historian, I find such nuances relevant. As a philosopher, I find them enticing. Regardless, the events surrounding the cleansing of Shinova are of specific relevance, and I am doing my best to record what I can discover of the wind's own words regarding them. Though now that the wind and heralds have vanished, I have only two sources who can speak of these events. They are my witnesses. <laughs> what? Which, which the thought is... Yeah. Two sources, Kaladin, Wind, Zeth, Truth. Yep. And like, this is someone mm. writing <clears throat> about stuff and they're going to use Kaladin and Zeth as a source is like a possible explanation. And that's where the Wind and Truth come from. Mm. And it's about stuff going on in Shinovar. And like, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that's the most obvious thought. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like you could... You know, there's lots of people there, right? It could be Kaladin and Syl. It could be Ishar and Seth. You know, there's a lot of two witnesses. You know, you know I also, in between, I messaged you of another, like, ruin case where things were slightly different in the two things, and it was related to the wind, and it keeps reminding me of this, and from the chasm scene for Way of Kings. And it's oh, one yeah. I remembered because I've done a dramatic intro one from my top ten series that had that scene, so I've done it, and from that I read from my copy of Way of Kings, and mm -hmm. I know what that sounds like because I listen to it a bunch when making it right yeah and then there's the graphic audio bit that's like probably my one of my favorite bits of the graphic audio um and it's the difference between in the in my hardcover way of kings i haven't checked the leather bound um it's uh like it and it's the scene where he's in the chasm and he picks up the spear and he does like the kata and mm -hmm. it ends with it was just him him and the wind he fought with her and she laughed but in the graphic audio it removes he fought with her and she laughs. It's just, it was just him, him and the wind. And I'm like, Ooh. okay, so that's now that we know the wind is a being. Cause the first yeah. time, like I read it, I'm like, oh, the wind means sill. But now that we know the wind itself is a being, I'm like, that kind of has a different. Yeah. 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 That reads There's a different. lot of those, man. There's a lot of yeah. weird wind quotes. Like we found some earlier when reading the way of Kings, it literally, the wind literally says to him, life before death, life before death, live before you die. That literally happens. Okay. So in the way of Kings, you know how I, I've said one of the things I find the most impressive about the Stormlight Archive. Mm. It's not just like if you read the entire series and go back, book one reads differently. It's not like book two made book one read differently. And then book three made book one and book two read differently. And then book four made book one and book two and book three read differently. And like <laughs> book five, the first six chapters already makes the first four read differently. Like, yeah. 100%. It's wild. I know it's crazy. I never considered the wind was a being, whatever. Um, yeah. But well, neither. Anyways, should I be uh, should I have not forgotten about this and checked my leather bound UK edition? Oh, it's okay. There's we okay. talked about a bunch of wind. There's dude. There's a lot. The yeah. wind is always it's interesting. That's what <laughs> changed though. It's from the graphic audio. To well, that. the graphic audio. That's a, like a third party, isn't it? Maybe. But yeah. it feels like a weird for them to just like skip a line. It is a little weird. I'll get but back hey, to you. Dude, the wind and the heralds have vanished. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? 
<laughs> what? Excuse me? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> Spoilers, <laughs> dude. Yeah. yeah, seriously. It's like, yeah, excuse me, chapter epigraph. Can you mark that as a spoiler, please? Like, yeah, uh, honestly. Can you mark Where's the chapter the tag? as a spoiler? Yeah. You have to <laughs> okay. mute that person on Discord. So I, I've been harping on about the Night of Sorrows for no joke about three years now of my life. And I kind of feel like that's coming. And I oh, feel yeah. like the wind, like this night will be like some sort of antithesis to Roshar as we know it. So the high storms and everything stop, no wind, I suppose, could be part of that. But the heralds vanishing, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like what would cause that? What would cause the heralds to vanish? I don't know. I mean, Bro's <laughs> hyped up the Night of Sorrows a lot in the first six chapters. Like he's yeah, done right. more hyping up of the Night of Sorrows in these first six chapters than he did in like the previous four books. I'm just trying. And to he mentioned them in the four books, and I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, Night of Sorrows. That's the thing that'll happen. And now I'm like, mm. so I should be afraid. <laughs> okay, so heralds. What do we know? We know the oath back, right? The oath pact is. Exists. Kind of like holding them together to this really old um, agreement um, with yeah, the whole. Like, it, they won't exist because is that all it would take if we break the oath pack somehow, sever it? Do they all just die? I, mean, I think the thing keeping them alive is because they're not like they're mostly dead. They're the same as mm. like Zeth. Like they yeah. died, and their like spirit kind of got like just shoved back yeah. into their body and their cognitive shadows or whatever. And I think part of the oath pact is the thing that makes them immortal like that. So without the, uh, if they just like lost the immortality somehow, are they mm. just gonna go heat off into the spiritual realm? Yeah. Okay. Which, speaking of which, spiritual realm. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. But we also get um, the events surrounding the cleansing of Shinova. Now that doesn't really specify whether it was a success or not, but it kind of because cleansing of Shinova is like it, in past tense, like it is completed. This was yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, if you referred to like the battle of Normandy, it'd be like, okay, like that doesn't say whether we won the battle of Normandy. It just says that there was a battle of Normandy. Right. So yeah, but it kind of, you can kind of assume that Kaladin has somewhat succeeded there, but we still don't really know what's over in Shinova besides like, Ishar and grass. some That's <laughs> yeah, just stupid grass and some horses yeah. and some chickens. Love chickens, yeah, <laughs> a few chickens here and there. Oh yeah, love- and nine honor blades. <laughs> Ten. Do you nine? think it's just like killing all the chickens in Shinova? This is the cleansing of Shinova. They're like, no, 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 <laughs> no. This needs to. <laughs> I'm gonna bet on no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so. I suppose you've gained some great clarity there, listeners, um, from the ep- our epigraph analysis. We are none the wiser. I have no goddamn clue <laughs> who the epigraphs are, but I feel like it's multiple people. Okay, I I don't think so so far because it's all written in first person. It's very reflective. Yeah, but if it's stories. like a collect, it could be like a collection of journals of the Knights of Wind and Truth. Yeah, but look, like it's not skip. It's not like page fifty-seven. It's we're reading it sequentially. And Are we reading it sequentially? Yeah, it's like each one has been like page one, page two, page three. I didn't it's even all, notice that. Yeah, it's oh. all in order. Okay, well they're not literally sequentially. As pages aren't individual sentences, but yeah, they're close together. Unless they, I didn't realize how close they're together. writing in a really big font. <laughs> yeah, like. I mean, we're, we've definitely missed a lot of stuff in between, like there, because there is a couple of pages. Right. But I actually hadn't even noticed that we I were that I kind of like to on. think it's like Kaladin writing in huge font with a crayon, so that's why it's page three and then page four. <laughs> oh. Oh, Kaladin maybe. isn't a philosopher <laughs> or a historian. No, he's not. So okay, but not yet. Anyway, because it's, it's just like with everyone, I'm like, here's why it's not them. But like it just fe- it's gonna be funny when it's just Seth, and we're just gonna learn more about him and his pat, and he's, we're gonna learn his yeah. flashback. Like, oh, he's a historian. Sick. <laughs> yeah, great. All right. Well, I suppose we'll leave that there and jump into chapter five. Um, oh no, yeah, chapter five. What still might be Shalon. Um, 
lots of lots of law drops here. It feels interesting because like this this all of the Shalan chapters feel like bite sized chapters so far. I feel like this if you went back to the Way of Kings, these however many we've got two or three Shalan chapters would be shoved into one massive Shalan chapter. But this feels yeah. a lot quicker, right? Pretty short chapters generally, I think. Yeah. Um, um, so, how, oh, do you want to have a go at, at summing this one up? Uh, or, yeah. Or... So, Shalon has a wee little chat with a herald. <laughs> um, yeah. I become annoyed that I can't spoil Malaz and Book of the Fallen and draw a comparison between a plotline in that and a oh, plotline really? in this. Okay. Um, and then. Okay, I'll try and summarize it better than that. Let's give me, <laughs> give me another chance. Chat. <laughs> okay, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll never, I'll never be hired again to do, to do, to do the summary. This is my payback because um, you gave me grief for my summary. You know what? I was gonna read them again before the episode, but then I forgot <laughs> oh, about it forgot. until five minutes before it started. <laughs> so I just skimmed them very. Quickly. All right, look, I'll try, I'll try. Because no, no, I, I got this, I got this. I, right, I'm gonna rise right. to the occasion. Okay, okay. <laughs> So, first, um, Shalon, uh, after drawing some things, has a conversation with Nodum, the honor spren captain, uh, about the 12 uh, wind spren that they've recruited to go bond people. And Nodum has a conversation with Shalon about how he doesn't feel comfortable doing it. And Shalon is like, it's chill, bruh. Do your thing. <laughs> um, and Nodum's like, okay, I'll go try and recruit more people. Um and then um, Radiant takes over a little bit because it's Shallan, and that's what happens. Mm. Um, and uh, the Shallan drawing, accidentally right? draws spiritual realm stuff again and learns from Kalek that this is as a consequence of the fact that she has that she's bonded to Spren and it causes weird things to happen. And she's kind of like, I didn't know that was weird. Whenever I have a weird thing happen, I've just been like, I'm a light weaver. We don't know how this works. Maybe this is just a light weaver thing. And then she's like, I'm going to go to the spiritual realm and capture slash rescue slash save, save slash defeat um, this unmade who I keep accidentally drawing. Um, and then Adolin's horse gets stranded at Lasting Integrity. <laughs> Rest in peace, sure blood. But I actually think probably Adolin's going to find a way and sure blood's going with them. That was a great little punchline. How many of you will it take to fly my horse home? Probably only one, right? Like they just have to lash him in the air. Like everything accelerates at gravity once you lash it in the air. So it shouldn't be that much harder to take a horse than to take just, a person. I just like the idea of a bunch of wind runners holding a horse up. And just he, did he bring I forget, did he bring sure blood with him into Shadesmar? Did he Apparently. bring a no? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he only has one horse. I assume yeah. it's sure blood. Yeah. I think so because I think there was a weird moment when we saw the Rishadium in Shadesma and we'll mentor. Now I'm like, wait, did one of the Rishadium die at some point? Have I forgotten? I don't think so, but I remember we're seeing like music spread or something really unexpected next to the Rishadium in in Shadesma. Like something, there's something funky going on. The good news is that Sanderson fans are psychopaths. So Sherblood's definitely going to have a detailed copper mind. Oh, 100%. Without a doubt. Uh, okay, rhythm of okay, so it takes place in rhythm of war. Um. Uh. Okay, yeah. As Frank, uh, he's inside all. Okay. Um. Yeah. What am I? What am I talking about? He's he's been dead since like we're. Wait, uh, what? Shortblood's dead. He's dead. Yeah. What? Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, I forgot. I completely yeah, forgot. and like I was like, in didn't he die at the end of Words of Radiance? Yeah, yeah, he got hit by red lightning and killed him, and he flung Adolin off his back. Oh my god, yeah. I've completely forgot that. That's sad. Didn't they take a Rishadium? Um, Did he get another Rishadium? I uh, no, he, no, one. he visited Rishadium. Gallant in his stables. Oh, um, but and then Gallant went with them. Oh, to lasting integrity on the way to Shadesmar. So is this Gallant? This is Gallant. Okay. Well, excuse me, that's Dalinar's horse, Adolin. So yeah, Dalinar doesn't do horseback riding anymore, and Adolin has inherited and earned his loyalty. <laughs> oh, so he wants the horse, but he doesn't want the title. 
Yeah, correct. Right. Yes, that All accurately right. summarizes his feelings. <laughs> oh, Adolin. Okay, look, he's also going to be the champion of Odium because let me... No, let's... He, he yeah. is. He is. All right, okay. All right, listen to this. Listen no, to this. I've had to deal with this. No, stop it, Jake. Stop it. You're going to deal with many... that one more, and one then more book. It's always like, it's always people think this for just the pre-release chapters. And then as <laughs> soon as it gets past the pre-release chapters, it becomes so obviously not true that everyone forgets about it. And then everyone forgets that this was a talking point by the time we get to the next book. But Pepperidge Farm remembers. It's been in all of them. I am keeping the tradition alive because, okay, sus, <laughs> sus moment. Okay. When Nodum, Nodum's like, I lay on the ground, battered and assaulted, and watch your husband rise in my defense against overwhelming odds. He saved me with no expectation of reward. In that moment, I knew that honor lived. Okay. Next sentence. Okay, there's, there's one sentence, then a sentence afterwards. Shlan slowly returned to her sketch where she soon found that she'd drawn yet another face in Adolin's shadow. Excuse me? Excuse me, Jake. <laughs> no, that's what I mean, me. honor lived, but oh, there's a shadow on Adolin. a shadow of on honor. Oh, what's the opposite of no, honor? I'm Odium. not great. I will not be convinced. That, I'm sorry, that's not convincing at all. Shellon has been drawing sketchy things I'm for sorry. like a million words. Not in his shadow. Not in his shadow. That's new. Off to the side, maybe being a full feature. Okay, in the shadow. Right after she's, she's been drawing, I don't know how to pronounce lives. it. Bam Mishram, how do you pronounce the unmade? Just Bam, Bam, Bam. Is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe Bam is like you know something's falling around. She's drawn Bam everywhere. All right, yeah. this this does not mean Adolin <laughs> is going to choose to go up against <laughs> Dalinar. For how would Odium convince Adolin of this? Yeah, well, I don't have all the answers, mate. Jeez. That's a pretty important <laughs> answer. I don't have everything. I'm like, hey, for my Odium champion theory, I have that answer. I'm like, he's going to tell Ishar that Ishar is Honor's champion and that Dalinar is Odium's well, champion, which Ishar already believes. And then Ishar will kill Dalinar or defeat Dalinar, believing he's Honor def- wow. saving the world. Do you don't think Adolin could be manipulated? Not I mean. to kill Dalinar. Well, we don't know that it's going to be Dalinar. Okay, not to go against Dalinar in the contest of champions. But that's what I mean. But maybe he doesn't think he's. Maybe he thinks he's on a champion because no, on a he's list. not delusionally <laughs> insane. <laughs> not yet, mate. A few more. Chapters. He's like the least insane character in this series. Hey, they're not bringing his horse with him. He's going to be grieving. They're going to bring the he's, horse. It's going to be but, so messed up. Okay, <laughs> I literally want you. This character. This series has how many characters? Like five hundred. I want you to name three who are less in who are more um sane Stable. than Adolin. <laughs> sorry like i had a rush of possible candidates in my head and they're all and it's just like no 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 yeah problems. yeah name three who are more stable than adolin um hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's he he's put me on the spot um it's a valid tactic okay i know i know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know man I've got no one. Yeah. I've really got like, no one. And there actually might be zero. I just was like, didn't want you to name one. Well, and for me to be like, okay, that's valid. So I was like, ah, you won't come up with three. Oh. Uh, like, like, if Renard, you rank no. every Stormlight character, and I mean all of them, name. Yeah, every single one. From least to most sane, he might literally be the most sane. Yeah, it's it's kind of astounding, but you might be right. Um, but I'm also on the spot, so I'm sure there's some real stable guy. No, they're all <laughs> nuts. They're all insane. Like this whole book is filled with absolute head cases, mate. No, 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 that's insensitive. Yeah, I don't know. I Navani's don't, okay, reasonably stable. Yeah, Navani. But is she distinctly more stable than Adolin? (laughs) She's got some imposter syndrome going. I I I think I think she's I'm taking Adolin, I think. It's close. If you want to say Navani, I'm like sure. And and look at Yasna. Yasna's pretty stable. I mean she's Yeah, Yasna's almost so logical into being like 
this gets kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Every, I mean, and she's got some like funky ghost blood, assass- like murder in the background. Going, I, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'll grant Yasna. But also, um, Adolin did stab Sadius through the eyeball. Yeah, you know, that did good it go. work. Good job. <laughs> what, what, That's a completely <laughs> normal, like sensible thing to do given the circumstances. You heard it here first, folks. Jake condones eyeball stabbing <laughs> only if it's sadius <laughs> okay fine <laughs> all right um but okay some other uh well if it's moash you can do it as well okay. um I think but he, he has a pretty good case for the most sane <laughs> character in the series oh, like right. he's not distinctly the most sane but like okay so very strong you candidate. don't take anything from this in that moment i knew that honor lived and then she draws a sketch okay of bam i'm sure the shadow. shadow means something yeah I think it's a lot more likely that it means like Adolin is in danger. Some mysterious figures keeping an eye on them. All right. Then Adolin is going to try and defeat Dalinar and lead to Dalinar oh, ending man. up serving Odium for time immemorium in a war against the Cosmere. <laughs> the best part is that we're like just a few months away from getting definitive answers. And I can't yes. wait. I can't yes. wait. And finally, I can be like, see, Adolin, but then Adolin can survive through this book. Yeah. And then in Stormlight 6, <laughs> in the damn pre-release chapters, people will be like, what if what if Odium has another champion and it's Adolin? It's foreshadowed, bro. Uh, yeah, well, that will be me. And the best part is there would have been 10 years of build-up before those chapters, which I... Oh. And then you know what I'll be like? I'll be like, no, we've been over this. Stop it. <laughs> All and right. then I will once again. I'm. You have these ten years to prepare a long list of more sane Stormlight Archive okay. characters than All anyone right. Cohen. I will. And you know what's gonna what's gonna kill me? The second I upload this, there will be like five to ten comments giving great answers of who's more stable. Happens every time. I had on the. I think it was the week. No, it wasn't the week. I was sick, but it was the week I did the double episode with you and Jimmy. I was exhausted. It was a long day of recording and I had a brain fart and forgot it only took one Herald to break in Braze to reset the whole thing. And almost every day since that day, there's someone telling me that mm-hmm. I was wrong. That yeah, I was you wrong. get the comment every time. Day. And you're like, every single know. day. And I'm like, yes, I am indeed an idiot. Thing is, I, I, I don't <laughs> think you're going to get comments constantly being like, here are people obviously in the Stormlight <laughs> Archive more sane than Adolin. Because there's just... Like, let's just compromise Stormlight Archive list of characters. Look, seriously, Jake, it's fine. We'll all be here to support you when Adolin is the champion and we'll... He's not. We will... We're all friends here. It's okay. All right. I, 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 will I, I refuse, Jake, to, to waste 10 minutes looking at the character list of the Stormlight Archive. Whatever. They're, they're I, I, I will... This is, the, <laughs> this is the theory hill that I will die on. You know how okay. sometimes I'm like, yeah... I don't really think it would, but like, you know, yeah. that's interesting. This is the one I'm just like, the line must be drawn here. Okay, fine. This far, no further. <laughs> fine, fine, it's I'll happened, allow it. Like, I, I need to know, anyone who was around, were there Words of Radiance pre-release chapters? I wish I, I was know. around for them, because then I could be like, was the concept of Odeon's champion? It didn't even exist. So we're 100% on. We're three for three. Now. I think the champion did exist then, actually. Came up in the way oh, of kings. And we All right, like, I wonder if, if people in Words of Radiance were like, Adolin is going to be Odium's champion. It's like, no, he's he's a golden mm. retriever. Okay, it's I mean it's a golden retriever who's really good at stabbing people. In fairness, but <laughs> he also might be the like, best swordsman in on Roshar. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, without any powers. But yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of like skill, not yeah. in terms of like ability to fly. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was well, like Tom, but whatever. Yeah, the next thing is this whole sort of eye-opening moment about Shalan and that she draws upon fortune to to touch and see in some small way what could have been, what might still be. Um, and then when I read that, I remembered Sanderson has read this part of the chapter before. <laughs> I remember hearing him read this live, but yeah, so. This whole time, she's been peeking into the future slash spiritual realm to be drawing. So I guess that makes sense with the unmade drawings we've gotten before. I mean, the cryptic ones we're glimpsing into Shadesmar. 
Um, and then I guess every time she's drawn like an ideal portrait of someone and they get so happy. I mean, the like, version of Elokar she drawn, Drew, that could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> and um, who else? She did, um, she did, who did she draw on the way to the uh, Shattered Plains? She yeah, drew I one forget of those his name. Guys, but that, I remember that scene. Yeah, um, it was a good scene. So is this, this is due to, okay, what's this due to? Is it just due to testament and pattern or is this a herald? Herald issue, Jake. Uh, I feel like it's due to testament and pattern, considering the herald is like ah, it's due to testament and pattern. But I am willing to grant the idea that it's possible that the herald's wrong, because in book people, in story, people are wrong about things all the mm. time. And uh, this is an argument I end up having. It happens all the time. Yeah. People are like, but the character said this. And I'm like, yeah, but they're probably like wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you missed Jimmy's <laughs> theory that Testament is an undercover agent <laughs> secretly what? messing with Shalan since birth. Jimmy, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was cooking for a while. Then I think he Testament is Odin's champion. Um, <laughs> sorry, what? I didn't say anything. I think he was just, he was, he was riding the high of his last Testament theory going thing. well. Yeah. Been, I mean, you know, Testament's more likely to be easier to convince and be like, look, this Radiant betrayed you. You should go against them. So Your sword, how would you be defeated? You're basically indestructible in, in this physical <laughs> realm. You'd win via old age eventually. <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, this is kind of um, teasing us about multiple spren bonds and, like, new powers. Kind of like... um compounding yeah that's what i was thinking of. it yeah, seems less op compounding. than compounding by several mm. orders of magnitude but that's because like everything is less op than compounding i mean everything happening on schedule is like somewhat terrifying compared to yeah <laughs> but like compounding especially <laughs> yeah yeah which but this kind of invigorates me because i'm excited to see new things with radiant powers and what you can do um on rosha because it kind of feels like right now i'm kind of like i feel like i understand perfectly what most people can do and the stage is set but that's tends to not be sanderson style there's tends to be like quite rapid speeds of growth and innovation in the magic which could be fun to see yeah. um besides just like start, wait until they start combining that's what i mean so i guess we've got somewhat fortune, of an fortune is a fortune i think is a furukumi trait that you can store and tap, isn't right? It a, isn't it a gold thing? Is it Maybe. Gold? I think it's also something that, like... Or the uh, 11th medal? Uh, yeah, well, I, I feel like it's one of the things that one of the random medals, it's like, you can store fortune, but, like, no one knows what it means. And there's been funky fortune stuff with Renarin as well, right? Due to his yeah, cro spin. chromium stores fortune. Hmm. Um, yeah, fortune is a spiritual property in the Cosmere related to luck, seeing the future, or versions of the future. So Ooh. if you had a person who could access fortune via drawing also be a chromium ferrucumist, could they then use this fortune and then store it in the chromium and do that over and over again and store up unlimited fortune? <laughs> Multi-Cosmere power compounding. And then burn that they're an allomancer as well to get even more to store it. it's triple compounding you've probably just written like a era four villain <laughs> like 15 years in advance so here's the other question actually <laughs> if having two of one spren accidentally like creates fortune are, are there other things that like having two spren can like oh, accidentally create? there's going to be a spreadsheet at the back of yeah. Stormlight Six, a hundred percent. Two cryptids it's, equals fortune. Two wind runners equals I don't know. You can talk to stones or something. The thing is, it's, it's there's sixteen things you can store with Farukami, and there's there's only ten mm. um, radiant orders. Um, so well, some knows? of them would be kind of funny, though. I still think I I'm really like I know this is unrelated, but some of the Farukami powers, like the less standard one, like I really want to see. Like, I want a character who uh, can store determination. And they can be like, they're usually like kind of cowardly. And then every once in a while, they're just like, I got that dog in me, you know? Store determination. Is that possible? 
Yeah, yeah, that's ele- Electrum is Store's determination. Man, Imagine I, a determination compound. It'd be like Kobe <laughs> Bryant. It'd be like that's just the Mamba mentality. I'd never give with up. magic. Yeah. <laughs> I'd oh, be like, man. They're, it's just you meet a character and they're like, yeah, I always get up at three a.m. and I do two hour workout and then I work all day and I'm like, and it's like, whoa, you're so determined. It's like, yeah, I'm an Electrum compounder. It's like, bro, this is your power. Sounds like Sanderson. He's like compounding just like work ethic. The dude's ready. Uh, Yeah. He's storing wakefulness, maybe. Yeah. He's just never, like, he just never runs out of steam. What I found interesting. By the way, consider <clears throat> the Lord Ruler could compound determination. The Lord Ruler. Because he, 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 he was a fullborn. Like, he'd compound yeah. everything. Yeah. He should have used more of the determination when he was kind of like, oh, this sucks. He should have just been like, oh. Now I'm a mom my mentality. But I mean, you have to be somewhat determined to compound determination. You know what I mean? Kind of got to catch 22 there. Yeah, but only like, <laughs> you, you could always become less determined. <laughs> Store it. This is the stupidest conversation ever. <laughs> but anyways, maybe that's, maybe, maybe this is how in every fight, Paladin suddenly goes like, goes sicko mode and wins. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's accidentally creating... We'll find out he's been doing it the whole bloody time. He's actually, yeah, he's been drawing upon determination, which is a cosmic Nothing is real. Thing. And the yeah. cosmic it's all just freaking allomancy in the background. Emotions are a lie. <laughs> Nothing is real. That's so Kallax cool. says like she's drawing Bam because she's thinking of Bam. So, like... Is it, is Isn't she thinking because- of Bam because she's drawing Bam? <laughs> I feel like she wouldn't be thinking of Bam very much if she never drew Bam. Well, she's always surprised that she drew Bam. She's like, oh, there's Bam again. So, I don't know, maybe it's a subconscious thing. I just found that interesting. Like, oh, because you're thinking about it. That's why she's showing up. I don't know. It's also, it's it's also in fairness, it's possible this is a case of character wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Calic is, yeah. So, look, that's that chapter, I think. There wasn't any, like, obviously there's always a little bit more, but I think that's more or less it for that one. Um, and then we move on to chapter six, nobility, and there's a lot here. These oh, yes. chapters are, like, dense as hell. Jake Jake with the, the perfect summary coming up right now. <laughs> okay. So, Kaladin first goes, he, he goes in to talk to Dalinar, and uh, remember, and Dalinar is like... Yeah, I want to talk to you this entire time, bro. I wasn't waiting. Wit told me to stay back. Seth is doing his fang, being kind of crazy. Kaladin's like, that boy kind of crazy. Um, and then they they fly off to go on a little bit of a scenic tour. They want to take the scenic route to yes. for your three room, you read through. And um Dalinar's like, hey, you know how you've helped some people who are kind of crazy? I've got a long list of people who are crazier than my firstborn son. And Two of the most crazy ones um, are, are Zeth and Ishar. Do you think you could help them out? And Kaladin was like, probably not, man. <laughs> like, fine, I guess I'll try. Um, and then Dalinar's like, hmm, how do you feel about being royalty? And then Kaladin <laughs> is like, where the hell did that come from? Didn't you know that there's an epigraph that mentions someone losing, like, the tower, the crown, and the spear. Oh, yeah. Like, this is clearly a bad idea, dude, to have it all be one person. And Dalinar's like, you don't know that. You haven't read the Stormlight Archive. You're a character in it. And then Kaladin's like, good point. I'll consider it. <laughs> yeah, the fourth wall break kind of took me what does everyone? Surprise. What does everyone think of my summaries? Was that, <laughs> was, that, was that good enough? I think the Copper Mind's transcribing it as we speak. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the death rattle. Um, but yeah, look, okay. Seth. Calm, rhythmic breaths. Rhythm, rhythm of Rosha, perhaps? Maybe? Maybe. 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 I just thought what, the r- what, rhythmic breaths was interesting. What Farukamic power is he accidentally drawing upon? Breath? <laughs> yeah, bre- breath? Oh. Oh, it, actually, it's kind of funny enough. Um, <laughs> You know how when when people do stormlight, they like mm. don't have to breathe, and we're just like, well, it just heals the like yes. the suffocation. What if they're drawing upon breath? Well, who's to say it's not just the same thing at some point, right? Well, I think health and breath drawing are like distinctly different things, and I assume that they were just basically like constantly 
suffocating and then that damage was instantly healing right yeah i guess you're but right it, yeah. but it's kind of weird but that's kind of weird it <laughs> like actually think about it. they all draw upon health which is a faruka like what we're you, okay with the fact, like it seems actually thinking about it these are split into four it's now non it's not controversial that when you draw upon stormlight you draw upon breath you draw upon health which is a a um you know, a Farukamic like investor power that you can do. They also seem to draw upon breath. They don't need to breathe. Um, they get more energy. Do you know what the fourth one on that quarter of the table is? Determination, <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Determination. It's all coming together. <laughs> oh man, this is the thing. I was watching um, good old George R. R. Martin talking about hard magic systems, and he's like, "If you're making a hard magic system, it's just fake science," and um. He's not wrong because like, I mean, he is kind of wrong. Is he? But yeah. Like I find the hard magic. <clears throat> I find when some authors who don't do hard magic talk about hard magic, I'm like, okay. So like, but I mean, there are rules to this, right? It can be figured out. Like we're talking about. Yeah. It now. The, so I, I would, this is what I would ask George in, mm. in the Hobbit. There's this ring. Its rules are really specific. You put it on and you turn invisible. Fake science? Yeah, no, but this is like, <clears throat> this is throughout the whole Cosmere, man. It, it pervades the whole thing. Yeah, so in some ways it is kind of fake science. I think that's what Sanderson's going for. Like, Yeah, and in Sanderson's new... case, he's very specifically, like, in some ways trying to do a fake science where he's trying to, like, make it work together that like like yeah. that. But also it's kind of ironic because, like, okay, George writes dragons that are, like, magical beings, and then he figures them out how they work extremely precisely and it's extremely grounded so i'm like okay so well, for magical creatures you're chill with it being fake science no i think I, I don't think he's saying there isn't a reason why his world works mm -hmm. i'm just saying like these books it's a, kind of like a feature to like yeah and it is like in some ways it is fake i mean rhythm of war is very literally fake science yeah like yeah. Uh, the nomani parts um this was an entire discussion where I'm just kind of like, I mean, it goes to a different topic, but um, whenever like authors are just like, no, no, this isn't the type of man. This isn't the way you do it. This is, and I actually haven't seen this George one. I just saw quotes from it, okay. but I was like, cause I'm like, they're just different things. Like the comparison in my head is if someone was just like, no, no, no. You don't want a hammer. You want a saw or like a screwdriver. And it's like, yeah, okay, like yeah. <clears throat> a screwdriver is good if I have like a screw, but like what if the occasion, what <laughs> if the situation like a hammer is more useful, you know? Oh, like, yeah, no, I don't think he's saying one's better yeah. than the other. I'm just, but I think he's just I, making I just think, a distinction. Like a lot of magic does have limitations that you're aware of in novels and you know how it works mm. and you just don't think about it as much like this is why one of the hobbit ring is like my example this comes up so the other day in in a discord someone was trying to come up with a scale with zero being like the softest magic they could think of mm. and 10 being like the hardest magic they could think of and i was legitimately struggling to come up with a zero they had it as like entire worlds not like specific magic types right. of magic in a world and it was like it was tough to come up with. And it was mm. like, okay, Song of Ice and Fire Magic is pretty soft. It's like, okay, how does warging work? Like, you kind of know, right. right? What about um Harry Potter? Where did that? Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like it's pretty soft. And it's hard to come up with way softer magic. But also, it's like, you know, um, if you say Expelliarmus, this happens. If you say Avada mm. Kedavra, this happens. But also sometimes, so I'm like, if you can go to specific magics, my an example of zero would be like Song of Ice and Fire Blood Magic. I have no goddamn clue how it works, really. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but the entire distinction between fake science, which lots of sci-fi books have fake science, and magic is kind of weird because the fake science is overtly not real science because they'll come up with a way to travel like faster than light. If they could actually do that, they wouldn't be writing sci-fi books they would be like, hey, this is how you travel faster than light. So it's like, it's science if you, it's fake science if you as the author pretend 
that it follows our laws of the universe. Even if you know it doesn't, you just pretend it does. And we just don't know why. And it's like, if it's magic if you don't pretend that it doesn't follow our laws of the universe. But it's kind of a weird distinction because it's like both actually don't follow our laws of the universe. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just like, in some way, it's like, for me, it's more like how deep you want to explore it. In my mind, all magic has some sort of like code that you can break to it to make it, to figure it out. It's just that some series yeah. don't go to the efforts to figure it out. And Where, all, almost all magic, you've some idea of the limitations just because we're in a narrative. Yeah, exactly. But I'm just yeah. saying, dude, like the Cosmere, it's like yeah, totally it, it unique is, in that sense for me. It's I'm fake like, science, yeah. It's, a it's degree. just like, I think it's cool. I think, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Like, I think see, now me being like, wait, is this how this works together? Like, because yeah, I'm actually, fun. I'm legitimately like, wait, these four Farukami traits are all in the same part of this table. <laughs> yeah. And we seem to get three of them. Like, and so now we've established the precedent that when you use Stormlight, like Stormlight Surge Binding powers, you can draw upon at least one of these. So now I'm like, I've, it's opened my mind, Christian. Yeah, no, that's, that is cool. That's that's why it's a fun series to make yeah, theories awesome. on because you know the guy heading it up. Like, there's has, an answer. There's an answer. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's why it's cool. Yeah. Um, so now I'm looking at the ones. I'm like, okay, which ones do we have, do we sometimes overtly draw upon? And it's like, okay, like speed. They get faster. Fortune. Shalon does it. Um, health. Mm. They don't die. Um, breath. They don't have to breathe. Um, warmth, I think. Because another thing, like, if they go stormlight, yeah. they don't get cold when it's cold out. And I kind of, I was just being like, oh, stormlight gives you a healing factor. You just get cold and you just get hypothermia and then instantly heal the hypothermia. So you're not cold. But you can mm. feel the sensation of cold and not get hypothermia. Like, you'd still, like, the nerves would still be like, it's cold as shit out. You just wouldn't end up like losing fingers. Why? Yeah. Draws one warmth. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, but then, then we get to the point where we, it's like, you got to toe the line. Yeah. Cause even me, this the super fan who loves diving into it. Sometimes I'm like, Oh man, I just want a cool story. And sometimes yeah. you get lost in the, lost in the, the magic system of it. But I'm just now I'm like, wait, is the general power. <laughs> Is this just where the general powers of surge mining come from? How do, how does how does it decide which factors it can drop on? Like yeah, why those? There, there'll be yeah, there'll be a very specific answer, I'm sure. Um, but hey, let's go back to the chapter. So sorry, I won't. Let's, no, you're fine. Um, okay, so he's like, yeah, do therapy on 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 Seth and Ishar and figure it out. Um, which is just kind of funny because <laughs> Kaladin's done like what a couple of group therapy sessions yeah. and he's like, go. It's like, <laughs> okay, I understand technically I'm the most qualified person on Roshar, <laughs> but you understand I'm also not qualified, right? Like, <laughs> I know it's like I changed one tire and they're like, all right, go to the F1 and <laughs> be it's like, listen, <laughs> you just invented the job of mechanic. You need to <laughs> fix all the cars because no one else has had any success. <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah but like how do cars work i don't know <laughs> so obviously the biggest thing well you never know when i say this in chapter but one of the biggest things is dalina offering the succession to kaladin because the young colin lads aren't interested and if navani and dalina die um he wants kaladin to be the ruler of ur theory which obviously comes with a lot of baggage and trauma um with kaladin and he's responsibility, not, yeah. and responsibility like he i think if he could immediately just say no no thanks bye he would <laughs> but he's well aware that there was a death rattle that may have something to do with this so he's mm. thinking it over <laughs> what exactly was the phrase near death rattle? Do, we, do you have that up by any chance uh i did but why did i close the tab i'll get it Spear um round. Let's see how good the Cawthorn Mind is if I just Google Tower oh, Spear Crown Death Rattle. I've already got it, mate. He must pick it up. The fallen title, the Tower, the Crown, and the Spear. So in this chapter, 
okay, so the fallen title being like, you know, ruler of Urethiru, the tower being Urethiru, the crown being like the royalty Isn't of the royalty. glyphs of House Colin a tower? Yeah, the tower and um, he but, says it in here. Where is it? Yeah. Tower and the crown. Come it says, um, wearing a Colin blue uniform with his glyphs on the back, the tower and the crown. Okay. And then I expose the spear. I mean, that <clears throat> that makes me think of Kaladin. So there, there could be a twist of like, maybe Kaladin has taken the title, right? And then he falls. And then someone else has got to pick up the tower, the crown, and Kaladin's spear, which is which has been left behind. Alternatively, uh, the spear could be, if we go on the Kaladin becomes a herald arc, the spear could be a representative of one of the heralds things maybe oh yeah okay yeah yeah yeah. what are yeah like, i'm still like to apologize to all the people watching for how much of these are me just looking at things on the copper mine <laughs> it gets like that sometimes but i just can't remember everything bro there's so much stuff it's, yeah there is a lot of stuff heralds of the almighty um i feel like they have glyphs but i don't know where to see those glyphs mm. Well, they they are associated with numbers. I don't recall any being associated like with a spear or an object, to be honest. Um, yeah, I know. Like when um, Kaladin swears his third ideal, like when he swears ideal, there's usually like a glyph appears in the air, which is I think the one in Words of Radiance is sword shaped, not spear shaped, though. Mm. I just love like. It's it's so hard. It's like, how much can you trust this this man, Brandon Sanderson? Because it feels so on the nose. It's like, hey, do you want to be the next ruler of Urethiru? Remember my glyphs, the the the, crown, the tower and the crown and the spear or whatever? It's just like, okay, you want us to think of this death rattle. You do. Um but it could play out. What's cool about Sanderson is you can kind of somewhat predict, but then it happens in a, in a way that you don't quite expect. So I expect that this line of succession has to do with this death rattle, but maybe we're not quite onto it. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes it's like some of the death rattles we're just going to get answers for, like not all the answers at the end, like some of them we just know. And yeah. it's just like, they don't all have to. So it, it, it could be just this, mm. but I mean, that also means bad things are happening to Dalinar and Navani. But like, if bad things happen to Dalinar and Navani, he's taking up the fallen title, the Tower and the Crown. I don't Spear, know what the Spear title is coming that's from. Why. It, could that be? What's the Knight's Radiant symbol? Because he'd also become the head of the Knight's Radiant. The Knight's Radiant symbol looks like a sword. Sword, yeah. But uh, that's why I was thinking maybe he has taken it up, then he goes away. Because you need to pick up his spear as well. Maybe. Yeah. Um. But then Dalinar also says, I can't imagine what the contest will be. I feel it won't be a clash of swords. But what? What am I missing? So are we, is, this is not going to be a duel. Is the contest of champions just going to be like sort of carnival games in a 1v1 setting <laughs> in a scoreboard? Uh, someone's going to need to compound determination for this contest. <laughs> it's just whack-a-mole contest of champions <laughs> man i, I don't want to see what someone compounding determination would look like now whatever um I, I like what you said it's just like kobe bryant just like <laughs> straight to the gym <laughs> it's just kind of funny compared to like all the other compounding things you get this like completely unstoppable power <laughs> like you can move insane speed you can heal your head being blown apart you can lift a building and then yeah. it's like you got that dog in you <laughs> uh yeah compounding determination i want yeah just compounding any sort of slightly off trait like that leads to hilarity compound one of them is just copy compound energy it's just <laughs> like imagine so, having a young child who ends up being an energy compounder and they find out oh no we're all doomed maybe that's what lift has been doing this whole time Interesting. Maybe she draws upon the fortune mm. of energy. No, she draws upon the power of energy with uh, when she eats food. I mean, everyone seems to get energy. When they work <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, and this is this is cool. Like metaphysically, it's like this is why 
surge binding gives you the some of the base stuff. Right. Yeah, true. Mm. What's also cool is that Ishar is in the chapter header of this chapter, which reinforces the relevance of the chapter headers and which heralds we see. Okay. But I would like to note Ishar ends up being relevant just by like chance a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean they are relevant. I mean they're talking about him a lot yeah. in this chapter. Yeah. Um but he, there's he's gonna Odin's disappear. champion. Well he's gonna disappear. If it is, they mm-hmm. go on. Well he apparently. can be Odin's champion first. <laughs> oh man, these chapters they just leave you wanting more. It's weird reading week by week. I I'm enjoying it. I like it. Yeah. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. But I've I've enjoyed it for all three books that I've done it for. Um, Mm -hmm. And also I've just really enjoyed these. Like these have been my favorite first six chapters of the three that I've done. I would say by a pretty fair margin, like the first six chapters of Rhythm War, I was like, these are good. And then I remember it was like 10 or 11 were my favorite of the pre-release ones, which were like Kaladin comes back and Dalinar like dismisses him from like, that was pretty dope. Oathbringer, like the start was pretty good, but these so far have been my favorite first six chapters. I'm think. just going to quickly do the math on like what chapter we're going to end up by the release. Well, did they go up to release day last time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be more this time as well. It's a longer book. So we're getting the most right. pre-release chapters this time. Um, I think we're getting like 130,000 words or something. Did I just make up that number? That number sounds right to me, but I can't remember where I got it from. So we're getting 30 more chapters if I with my quick my quick that sounds about right which is a lot (laughs) i think it sounds it sounded like we're getting like a third of the book yeah like we're getting if they're they're plotted as three trilogies we're getting to like the first climax i know it just seems crazy to me because like 30 chapters feels like half of the way kings um but yeah so it's like the equivalent for some quick vibe checks because like these have been the last few first like third climax it'd be like the equivalent of getting shalon's confrontation in urethra with the unmade it'd be like getting the first up to the first zeth versus dalinar adolin and kaladin Ooh. on the shattered plains it'd be like getting to the invasion of urethra in rhythm of war which all feel really early in hindsight in the grand scheme of things um which I don't know. It just kind of, at the same time, it feels like within six chapters, we have not. What was the I mean, it feels like shalan has been said, standing in the exact same spot for three chapters. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely done. I mean, I guess it's been like, uh, it's like been, it's day two or something. It's still day one, dude. Day one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the way of Kings one, what would that be? Maybe like him strung up in the storm is probably the first. Uh, that feels thing. like the second. Maybe oh, it might honestly just be chasm. it might honestly just be him at the chasm. It might be like yeah, an early one. Chasm. But that yeah. also feels like that could be like the inciting incident for the first yeah. like, trilogy, and it was just manually. Anyway, anyway. Um Yeah, it might just be that to be honest. Alrighty guys. Well I think we'll wrap it up there. Um as always, guys, thank you for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Rosha. Remember, the most important chapter a man can read is the next one. We'll see you next time as we jump into chapters seven and eight. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on. If you have feedback, questions, or theories, span read us at lostinrosha at gmail.com. Jake, thanks as always for um, remembering and scheduling this yeah i i i I really had to redo my entire (laughs) schedule to make this so uh. yeah keep your safe hands covered thank you very much